Hi, I'm Mike Flaw, and I'm a registered Florida landscape architect and Florida native. In this very short and sweet video, I hope to share with you my perspective on one of Florida's top natural resource concerns, water quality and conservation. Water is a key component of Florida's health, economy, and happiness. I mean, think about it. Do you fish or surf, enjoy the beach or boating? Or even if you're not the outdoorsy type, I know you shower and I know you drink water. So this is very important stuff no matter who you are. To fix Florida's water problem is a very complicated subject. And there's a million pieces to the puzzle. The pieces range from Lake Okeechobee discharge to agriculture runoff to the draining of the Everglades to septic tanks. These are really big issues without any easy solutions. Scientists, lawmakers, and citizens are working very hard to address these problems with reasonable solutions, which is not easy. I'm going to take the easy road here and talk about a solution that is pretty simple, cheap, and fast. The low-hanging fruit, as they say. So let me tell you that um, also I'm in no way an authority on the science of water management. Uh, what I have to share is my experiences as a landscape architect. And like everything, there is a connection. So I want to show you how your garden is connected to our state's water resource. The opening slides made some pretty big claims from saving water to reducing pollution to helping our wildlife, cutting fuel consumption and saving money. So what's the big idea here? Where am I going with this? Get rid of your grass. So now you're saying, huh, really? How is my lawn connected to all these things? It's simple actually. It's all about water, fertilizer and lawnmowers. That's right. Approximately 30% of consumer water is used in landscape irrigation. This doesn't include agriculture. It's just our own little gardens. Beyond that horrible waste, every time you fertilize your lawn, both phosphorus and nitrogen will ultimately end up in our natural water systems, either by leaching or surface runoff. Further, turf grass doesn't provide any significant food for habitat or wildlife. Replace that grass with native trees and shrubs and you'll give new homes to birds, butterflies, and bunny rabbits. Lawn equipment consumes 800 million gallons of fuel annually. And since most equipment is old technology two-strokes, the pollution that is generated is just awful. Lastly, something all of us hold dear to our hearts is our wallets. Think about this. You reduce your need for irrigation water and your water bill plummets, eliminate your fertilizer expenses, and save that money. I'm lucky to live in an area where people are very serious about this issue. We have facilities like Florida Oceanographic Center and Environmental Studies Center, uh, organizations like the River Coalition, and recently there's a group of kids who started a grassroots conservation group called the River Kids with a Z. There's a Florida Native Plant Society and the Audubon too. See what your community is doing and get involved. So how do you live without grass? Well, let's take a look. This home is in Hutchinson Island. The beach is only 100 feet to the east and the Indian River Lagoon is in their backyard. The previous landscape kept dying because it couldn't survive the wind, heat, drought, and salt. So I designed a planting with more natives and particularly those you'd find in coastal areas. Eliminated the sod and the project is now using a lot less water and requiring much less maintenance. And it looks pretty good. All right, this house is one of my favorite examples of sod-free landscapes that nicely accommodate kids, dogs, and entertaining, all without a stitch of grass. The palette's not 100% native, but the exotics that are used share the same qualities that you would look for in natives, like low water and fertilization requirements. There's plenty of deck space, plenty of habitat for wildlife, lots of shady areas to enjoy, and most importantly, there's no mowers. This should convince the skeptical that a landscape can be very attractive and functional even without sod. I have a lot of meetings with people to design their landscape where the conversation starts with, uh, Mike, we need a nice grass area for our dogs. I don't know. These dogs look pretty happy in the mulch.
The last house is a little different. The clients did not need or want large open space for dogs or kids. They just really enjoy gardening and they love natives. So I prepared plans that eliminate all the grass and replaced it with stone walkways and native shrubs, ground covers, and trees. The palette includes uh, plants like firebush, kunti palm, necklace pod, beautyberry, coral creeper, wild coffee, sea grape, silver buttonwood, coca plum, and uh, ilex. And now that it's established, the planting requires minimal irrigation and really no fertilizing which is important because if you look in the background there, there's a water body that butts up to the landscape and we don't want fertilizer entering the canal through surface runoff. Last project to show you is Florida Oceanographic Society, which is a commercial project. It is not grass free, but it is 100% native plant palette. And the grass that is used is bahia, which doesn't require uh, regular irrigation. This is a beautiful campus for learning about our oceans and the natural systems that affect them. So appropriately enough, they care a great deal about water quality and conservation. Okay, let's wrap it up. By getting rid of your grass, I suggest you'll save money and you'll consume much less water. You'll provide habitat for wildlife. I also believe that uh, you'll reduce runoff and pollution from uh, fertilizers and you will reduce fuel consumption. Now, if this isn't compelling enough, let me add one more factor. Local and state governments are working really hard and looking at this situation and many have already adopted laws that ban or restrict the watering and or fertilizing of private lawns. South Florida Water Management is already expecting a pattern of drought to continue. And with that will come stricter watering rules and stronger enforcement. So if you've planted a smart landscape, these restrictions will have no effect on you. On the other hand, if you have a high maintenance, water and fertilizer hungry garden, your investment could be devastated by a drought. So the bottom line is there's a lot of really good reasons for us all to rethink our notion of a beautiful garden. I hope that you'll go native. I hope you'll plant smart and conserve. I promise you'll be rewarded many times over. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the little presentation. If I can be of any help at all in transforming your garden into a smart landscape, give me a call. I'd be happy to help. Thanks a lot.